Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting live. Um, if you are new to my channel, head down that way. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and get notifications when I'm live. As well as like my videos and share them. Um, so I'm just going to get to it because I, I really have a lot that I need to get done. Um, as you can see in the description, I am working on a quilt that we named Mocha Dreams. It is a pattern I designed. Um, and it was part of a fun Friday um, of quilt thing, uh, of quilt uh, episodes, uh, or you know, video episodes or video log or whatever you want to call it. It was called Friday Fun Friday or Fi Friday Fun, and we named the quilt Mocha Dreams. This was back in April of 2019, and it's been sitting for a long time because we couldn't find the fabric that was needed for this to make it bigger for me to make more blocks. So unfortunately, since we couldn't find it, we did find the fabric, but we didn't find it in the size or shape that we wanted. So now I'm going to improvise with what we did find on the internet um, through Times Treasures. And I'm going to just make a different kind of border, but taking the theme of the blocks in the quilt and expanding it into the borders. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Anna. Hi, Suburban. So um, I'm going to hold it up and show you what I'm talking about because some of you probably are new to my channel and don't remember. And I'm going to hold the quilt up. <clears throat> Give me two seconds. Right. Trying to get these things to work all at the same time. So again, it was called Fun Friday and the quilt itself. I don't know if I named Pattern Fun Friday or Mocha Dreams, but I named the quilt Mocha Dreams. And this is it right here. And I hope I'm not spinning because it's spinning on myself. Let's see if I can't just reopen that. And it is made with batiks. I'll find the end of it. Hi, Joe. Hi, Vicki. How are you doing? I'm looking well this morning. I'm okay. I'm really congested again all the way, but I'll be fine. So here it is. I can't hold it up totally, totally in full because it's pretty, um, it's fully 100% square. But I designed this. I know some of you think it looks weird, but I'm going to come up close with some of the blocks. So this is it. It needed to be bigger for a queen size because so far it was only lap size. So it's done in all boutiques. Light and dark separate. So here's how it works. And I'll hold um, a block up so I can explain it. I'm just going to set it aside real quick because here's my end cuts. Here's just some single blocks so that I can show you how I did this. Um, oh, my computer's talking to me. Hi, Misty. Hi, Anna. No spinning here. Okay, so, Zosiviki, I didn't wake up till almost 11 a.m. Well, I didn't sleep. If that helps any, I've been up all night. <laughs> okay, so here's the block. Can you see that? So, what I did was I was using a six and a half. Uh, I mean, a six inch uh, Tonga treats. I don't know what that is. That are these by Timeless Treasures. It is a six inch by width of fabric. So it's six inches wide by width of fabric long. And it worked out perfect the way I made this because what I did was I cut the six inches into two and a half, two and a half, and then a one inch strip was left right because two and a half and two and a half is five leaving one inch of fabric i took those one inch pieces a light and put it with the darks and darks and put it with the lights and then sewn them together and then i took these right here were um different cuts so one was like three and a half and then a one inch of black and then i think that's one and a half which equaled six what I did was created um, 
what was, like pretend this was, because these are my leftover pieces, I created by sewing down both sides of the different numbers and created tubes. Then I cut them with my um, strip tube ruler. And then when I had opened them up, I had got these blocks and they were different. So some were this big, some were, see how that is? And this one, the square is different. And some of you might remember. And then some came out with the square even smaller because I did say four and a half, one and one inch. So that I had all different size pictures. So um, when I get a chance after the video, I'll link the original pattern um, pieces, the original pattern put together. There's like three or four videos of it. I'll try to find them all and put them all in the description below so there'll be links to the other videos. Um, but I'm going to carry this theme right here the rest of the way around the quilt now because we couldn't find the fabric that we needed. I couldn't find this, the six inch strips in the Tonga treats like this. So what we ended up buying because we couldn't get anything else is the Tonga treats, but the 10 inch squares when he ordered it, this is for Justin, by the way, <laughs> my best friend. When we originally ordered these, um, he thought that it was the six inch strips. That's what the thing said. But when it came in the mail, it turned out to be the 10 inch squares. So when he, went back to the company and said to Timeless Treasures and said, hey, the ad was wrong. They said, well, we had to update it and we can't do anything about it now because we actually don't carry these anymore. They don't sell the six inch. So we're settling with these. I cannot make these blocks without wasting a 10 inch square, of, like super wasting it. So I'm going to go with making it bigger by utilizing these and utilizing um, yardage to make it bigger and it'll look really cool. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. So again, I'll hold this up so you can see it for those that are just joining and I haven't read the comments yet. I will in a second. Um, I have a lot to do. So this is it. And it looks really cool because I alternated the big, medium and small when it comes to these pieces right here. I alternated them. So, and he loved it so much, you know, but I could not add, I only had four extra blocks and I needed a lot more than that. So we're going to go ahead and put some more together. And I guess I'll just lay this on the floor for now because I do have measurements that I need and so on and so forth. I'll lay it right here and I'll turn the camera down for a second while I clean up my mess right here. Hold on a second. All right. It does need a good iron, but <laughs> so there it is on the floor. So some of you probably remember it. I'm gonna clean up my mess while I leave it right there for a second. Okay. Almost ready. All right. So that's that. Let me turn the camera here. All right. Let me see who's on real quick and then uh, I'll get started. I had like messages. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Say, yarn it out. Hello. I said hi to Vicky and Joe. Vicky and Joe. Oh my God. I said hi to Suburban. Hi, Sineda. I just wrote you back, actually. <laughs> I'll get to it in a second because I'm live. Um, not in a second, but as soon as I can. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Aunt B. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Misty. Um, Anna. It reminds me of an alpaca. <laughs> it's the color. It's very creative. Um, hi, Luann. Things going. That's going okay. 
H H, hello. I was watching your upload show to and I saw you were going live. Now I am listening to two shows at once trying to concentrate on this. I'll just turn another one off. It will go to it goes to resume play. I don't know if you guys know, but you have a library right here in most apps. There's a library right there. And that goes to all the things you haven't finished watching. <laughs> it's like a um to resume play on most of the things you're watching. So just letting you know, and it goes right back to where you were. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put the mouse out of the way for this, is I'm going to use my black fabric because I'm replicating that. Um, I'm going to replicate this, but I'm going to do it um, almost like that. So I'm going to do the outside two and a half, two and a half, and then one inch from the black. So that way it's equal and it's going to go as a first border all the way around. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm also going to be mitering the corners. Um, for those of you who don't know about mitering corners, I need to plug my iron in. It's when a corner on a quilt for the border comes in together like this. So it is sewn with a diagonal seam. So that is going to be a mitered border on this. So I'm going to press this real quick. It's kind of been sitting folded up for quite some time now. <laughs> so it needs to be flat. Um, also, another thing is Walmart ran out of the color, this color that I used called linen. We couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Then Walmart got linen back in stock. I bought it. But, I mean, you really can't tell, you know, too much from the naked eye, if that makes any sense. You can't tell too much, but I can tell under certain lighting. The newer linen color is a shade, like the slightest shade higher. Um, so it, you can tell that they look different. I mean, in you probably can't even tell. But it is the same exact color. It's, it's just hard to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the darker one to go around its first border. Why? Because I kind of think it'll help blend that there's two different ones. But I will not take the original and mix it with the newest one in the piecing of it. Because I don't want... I definitely don't want to see that change and it look funny. So I'm going to make sure I use the new one all the way around first. And then this one save for its final order. So I'm just going to throw that out of the way because I'm going to be using these. And I only got myself like a yard and a half or something like that. I didn't get very much of it because I knew I didn't need to add too much more. Because I will be using these for the next border afterwards. <clears throat> so... Absolutely love the quilt. <laughs> I, recently, I just finished my old dog log. Old log cabin quilt from years ago. Didn't want to finish it because of the mistakes, but at least it's done. Finished four before February 4th. That's awesome. See, I got to get things like this finished too. I mean, this was supposed to go to my best friend for Christmas this last year, but we never decided because he was the one making the decisions about it because it's his quilt. So. It never got done. <laughs> well, I'm going to press this real quick. I'm kind of not in the screen, but I kind of am. I'm just going to give it a quick press. Get these wrinkles out. Because I am cutting one inch strips. Which is the theme throughout the whole quilt is one inch um, strips. Wow, that's really that's a mess on that ironing board. Get up all of them in. Okay. So I'm going to straighten, put this on a line and straighten it all up. It should be pretty straight, but I'm going to straighten it anyway. Make a nice straight line and cut like we're going to see right now with some measuring. Get this up here. Grab this down here and straighten it up. I'm going to measure real quick. It should be exactly square. I'm going to straighten it up on the floor really nicely. 
and try not to trip over everything while I'm at it. All the outer pieces are two and a half, one inch, two and a half, by the way. Just so everyone knows when I pieced these together. It was a free pattern to make this, at least. It was supposed to use more blocks and more pieces. 72 and a half. 72 and a half. I need some to write out. I'm going to write with. So right now it's 72 and a half by. I'm trying to make this like 100% as accurate as possible. Three. Yeah, I'm going to have to take more than one measure. I need two seconds and I'm just three and I need to take more than one measure. It's all on the bias, so this thing has stretched out quite a bit. 72 and a half. So yeah. Let a little now. And a half, yeah, so it's like 72 and a half by 72 and a half. It's just on the bias, so it's stretched out. Yeah, okay. So I need two strips on each side to add a top and bottom, and then two for side to side, except I want hangover because this is going to be um a mitered corner so i need one two and a quarter strips for top bottom side to side each so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine we're going to cut ten strips to be on the safe side anything left over i'll go with my stack of leftover stuff and then i can make something out of it all because that's what i do with my scraps i always make something separate and the bigger um leftover blocks he's getting pillow shams to go with it so there'll be two blocks per pillow sham it's very important keep up the good work I'm, I'm trying guys i know it was really long though but that's because i went on a tangent it's the middle of the night and i get hyper so almost right now i'm hyper because i didn't sleep it happens. I get really hyper when I don't sleep. Mm. Hi, Jody. Okay. Hi, Joanne from Vermont. Um, hi, Luann. 76 in Lake City, Florida. Mm, interesting. I do a t-shirt quote from my granddaughter once I get the block done. Where does the outside border start on the first, on the site first and then the top? Okay, I need to read this a little bit better real quick. And we'll say hi to Vivian and a seven below for Joe today. I do any t-shirt quote from my granddaughter once I get the block done. Where does the outside border start on the fir site first? and then the top or the bottom and top first and then the sides on a t-shirt quilt i would do the sides first then the top and the bottom for borders i would put the borders on the sides first and top then the borders on the top and bottom to keep it from um even though you have put um stabilizer on your t-shirts um when the quilt is being held up, the width, the the heavy part goes down. So you put your side borders on first to keep it from stretching down. Then you would add your top and bottom to keep it from starting to bow out, if that makes any sense. I've never done a t-shirt quilt, but I know because it works with any other quilt. Just like this one, even though it's completely square, there is no top, bottom, side to side unless I make it that. This is all on the bias, so it's stretchy. So it would be the same with t-shirts. Even with having stabilizer, they still have, they are still not 100% perfect and you added weight. So it's gonna make it 
heavier for sag. So I would add the sides first, then the top and bottom. And if someone else has something else to say, you can add and, and share with Sineda what you would do. All right, so I'm going to be cutting one inch strips. And some people don't like working with one inch strips, but guess what? It actually is great for highlights, for highlighting pieces. So I'm going to cut 10 only because we can use leftover anything towards other stuff. But I'm going to make sure that I have plenty since I am mitering my corners. I need quite a bit to hang from side to side. So I'm getting two one-inch strips with every cut. I'm going to try to leave them all together nice because I am going to cut the salvage off and sew them together. I'm making sure that this is really lined up because these are so small, it's easy to get them out of whack. I'm using my ruler from Teresa. <clears throat> so it works very good. Except for the fact I'm black. I don't like using it on dark colors because it's already tinted or frosted, the ruler itself. And the lines are black. It's the only thing about these rulers. So maybe these companies, uh, Coulter Select, will come up with a, another ruler that isn't frosted like this so that you can see dark colors better through it. But that's for the future, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm cutting 10. This will be 7 and 8. Oh, are you kidding me? Sometimes I just get those little divots in my board. And this will be 9 and 10. And that will be enough of the black for now for this border at least. I'm trying to make this for a queen size, and it'll probably be perfectly square. So I'm not going to, you know, make it longer or taller on one side by adding a thicker amount of um, fabric. So, all right, so I'm done with the black for now. There's 10 of those. I'm going to slide them all together real quick and cut all the selvages off at once. Keep it all together. Very nicely on the line. So there's five inches right there with one inch strips. I'm just going to cut all the salvages off and call it a day. And unfortunately, I am going to turn myself in front of the camera real quick because I can't cut underhand. There we go. All those off at once. All right. So there's all those. And I changed my foot out, and the whole entire quilt I've been using black thread. So I changed my thread to black, and I put my quarter inch foot on to make sure that I stay with my quarter inch. All right, now for yardage, and I'm going to try to cut two strips at a time. Fold this in half, and I got this thing is picking up so much thread. I'm going to go over and press this a little bit. Not going to be perfect, but it's got quite a bit of wrinkles <laughs> from sitting. Folded it up. And over here at the iron, you guys just see me for just a sec. I'm just going to get some of these wrinkles out. Or I. We. You guys are just watching. I don't know why I always say that too. It's weird. Very, 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 very
I will be pressing the borders too once they're on. This is just to make sure I get nice accurate cuts off of my wrinkled fabric. And I'm using steam, but this iron doesn't steam like the rest. Okay, good enough. Shake all that extra off. Fold it in half. And we're going to line it up on a line. Just put things up. Hi, Anne. Hi, Elaine. Uh, let's see, thanks for the miners and guests. I don't know about that at first. You're welcome. Thumbs up, everyone. Hi, Christy. Hi, everyone. New here. I'm beginning with third. Made my first block last night in my beginner's cooking class. I'm definitely hooked. Awesome, Christy. Well, welcome. Hope you can learn a lot from watching me and other YouTubers out there. All right. I'm going to line all this up. I am really going to have to straighten this edge up quite a bit. That edge is way off. Right, so it's about right there. Pick it up again, make sure it's nice and straight because I am cutting yardage. Okay, I'm going to line this up on my shortest because they're not cut correct. Sometimes the people at Walmart just don't know how to cut things. Making sure it's all crossing the line I want to use. Everything is on a line up here. Nice and straight. I'm going to lay the ruler right here and cut off a whole heck of a lot if you haven't noticed because it is a very wonky cut. Sometimes I just wish that they, these companies, when we go places, Joanne's, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, and they just let you cut it yourself. Like a special machine that can tell you how much you've cut because it fills the weight of where you're cutting on the mat or something, you know? Just because I know that we would do it so much straighter. Because some of those people just come from other departments. I mean, look at that. I just wasted like an inch about right there. But down here, it's not even a quarter of an inch. Look at that. I will cut it off right there. And this can go in the garbage. And look at that. I have an inch of or more. It's like an inch and a quarter of fabric. To use for something else. Same with this. This one has I lined it up better so this one didn't cut much off. Alright. Going with this one is right. I've already been online buying fabric. Hope you're having a great day. Kim is a snowy good morning. Did you get your sleep, Kim? <laughs> mm -hmm. Some of you guys were up with me last night, or this morning, I should say. All right, so I'm cutting two and a half inch strips, and I don't just need 10. I actually need 20 because I'm putting one above and one below my one inch strips of black. So I need to have an equal amount in both. So 10 would have gone all the way around technically nine and a half, but. I need a little bit extra for the mitered corners. So I need double that amount for each side. So I need 22 and a half inch strips. It's a lot. I hope I get it out of this. So there's two. Four.
probably not gonna get no 20 strips out of this. We'll just cut as many as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I'm gonna have to blend the other ones in. Maybe some on the bottom and some on the top. I don't know how I'm gonna keep that in order, I guess. Figure out. I'm gonna get quite a few more. I mean, the color is not off too much. Where did I put it? This is definitely a lighter shade. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to cut ten from this. And we're going to keep them separated. That way, I can have all these colors as the first, then put black, and then these on the bottom. That way, I know I have enough fabric. So we're going to remember, keep those together. We're going to open this up. I actually have cut the smaller one first. All right. We're going to cut 10 off of this as well. Six inches of snow, definitely a PJ sewing day. Okay. It sounds like what we got at dawn. I was on this morning watching the car sleep around on ice. We sent enough both of us out one swoop. And it was, it's okay to say that it's 77 degrees in sunny Florida. I'm in shorts and a t shirt and a window open. <laughs> oh, Savannah. Teresa's back. Um, Kim, hello. Panhandle of Texas. I think we landed in the middle of a storm. I have my soft PJs on. I have my PJs on too. Today is a PJ day because it's windy and cold outside. You know, Anna, you being in Florida, everyone thinks that Arizona is the hot state. You're just in nice warmness because it's only like it's only supposed to be like 50 something today. I have to answer this in case it's doctors. Hello. Hello. Say goodbye. It's not doctors. Okay. Let's cut this now. I need 10, two and a half inch strips from this one. Like I said, there's just a slight difference of color in the shade, but I don't want them to blend in the same one. Okay. So we're going to cut 10. Should I get 10 from this? Um, Two, three, four, no, nothing else. Not the easy one, two, five. I'm starting to veer. That happens. And this will not be number eight, but I'm going to straighten it up and cut it for my strip pieces of different random sizes in my pile. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's cut three more. We're going to keep those together folded in half, knowing that that's the lighter color. Straighten this side up. Even though it looks pretty straight to begin with. But again, it's been folded up and put away for so long. So 
I need three more two and a half inch strips. One. that over on this side so I remember that these are the two different colors. All right. I'm going to put that away. Close my blade. So I'm going to start sewing these together after I cut off the salvage. So the lighter ones I'll just put on the bottom. Are you kidding me? This mess. That's Louisiana. I don't know anyone in Louisiana. <laughs> Well, some of you guys that do, but you know, I have my phone number. All usually every single day in the morning. Nothing but junk phone calls every single day. Over and over and over. It's the most annoying thing ever. But my phone number was out there for business, so that's how everybody gets my number. Most of the time, it's like some electronic machine. You have not reactivated your home warranty. Or, it's time you update your car's warranty. You are eligible for blah, 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 blah. Or the fake ones that are, Hi, I'm the Social Security office, and I am calling you to let you know that your Social Security number, blah, 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 is required. You know, it's stupid, stupid stuff. The most annoying thing in the whole wide world. Every single day. All right, salvage is off. We're gonna sew all these together, and then in one big, huge, long strip, and then I will add the black one. And sew all the black one-inch ones together, and then we'll sew them down to one side. We're just gonna make four equal parts, if that makes any sense. Other side. Yeah, I'm gonna start sewing these. Off. It was on. And we have some security call five minutes ago. Aggravating. Yeah, it's not real. It's always fake. All right, let's move these one inch ones before I knock them down. End up with them all over the place. To attach a bazillion pieces like this, let me turn the camera a little bit. Some of you who are new to this, I have my fun little easy time saver. I always do this. I take my whole stack, it's all on top. My folds are all on one side, my open ends are on the other. I reach down and grab the bottom piece. Then I move that completely out of the way. I don't need it. Then I take the next two pieces and I put them on the machine and sew them together with my quarter inch seam. Then I take the next two pieces again, like this, out of my hand, sew them together. Next two pieces, they would be right sides together. If you're using a full a full print or a print print of any kind, you will see they will end up right sides together. Sew them through. Next two pieces. That way I'm not picking up or moving my hands. Everything is all right here in my hands. This is my little trick I've been doing since I started doing it. Probably for about a year and a half now I've been doing this. For everything that has a straight seam, this is how I do it. Now the next two until you have all sets sewn. Next two. And I just chain piece them through. I don't take anything apart just yet. I'm still holding the rest of the stack in my hand so nothing can get out of order. And the last two together, the single, you don't need it. So when I do this, I'm going to reach and trim all these like this. Trimming them all apart because they were all hooked together, keeping them in order. And now, 
I'm going to grab that single piece and ready. 100%. One humongous, long, long, long piece. Isn't that cool? And they all face the correct direction. So, now that all those are done, I'm going to find that end that I started with. <laughs> that I was showing you because I was playing with it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and now I'm going to lay it on my lap with the wrong side up so that I don't get lost on that. And I'm going to take the black now and do the same exact thing. I'm going to make sure my folded end is on one side, which would be my left hand. The ends that I need to sew are in my right hand. I'm going to pull that bottom piece out of the way. I'm going to grab two, 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 and two. It should always be right sides together. I'm going to slide this under and sew these little one-inch black ones now. These are so tiny. <laughs> they're even harder to grab when they're smaller almost sometimes. Grab the next two. This is a fun little way to not have to move or adjust your body. You're in the same position. Cloud account has been closed. I don't even have a cloud. I get so sick of these calls. Yeah, I get weird ones too. Or um, I won um, a $5,000 Amazon gift card. I've gotten a few of those now. Or that I qualify for something. Or I qualify for a loan. Or it's so stupid. All right, so I'm just doing that same exact procedure, except these pieces are a little bit smaller. So a little bit more um, difficult to get completely lined, but it works just well. Sorry, my hand got flipped. Gotta make sure I'm still in the correct orientation, which I know I am if I could keep them in my hand because they're so small in the correct direction. two. Okay, now snip these apart. And again, I will have one big, huge, long, long, long piece. So I'm going to throw one on one side of me. I'm going to put the wrong side up so that I can remember i just laying it right here, and I'm going to grab the other one. Even though it's wrong side up, it just helped me, kept, helped me keep it in check on my lap. But now I'm going to put it right side up. So I'm going to pick it up, put it wrong side down. I mean, right, yeah, wrong side down. <laughs> I'm going to come across to find the top, like so. And I really don't care if the seams end up matching or nesting. So if I adjust it for each one, it's okay. One will probably just be longer than the other. We're going to make sure that this is wrong side up or right side down. And I'm going to come and start sewing these together. With a quarter inch seam all the way down. This is the long, 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 long seam. <laughs> It's so sad that all these colors aren't some kind of site where they get a number for free, pay small amount for phone numbers. I hang up on them calls. Sometimes I answer them funny. Um, charge, change their phone number again. Times. So it would be gone for a while and start again. I just like showing them. Adjusting as I go, just lay it nicely. 
I'm going to be coming to my first seam soon. They shouldn't, I, I'm not lining them up purposely so that I get a better um, lay because these are one inch. So hopefully they'll be just slightly off of each other. And they are, which is good. That's what I want. Just to let the machine do its thing. on sewing so none of my seams should match because this is a one inch piece and if I folded it to one side or the other with nesting seams it would have made this one inch piece a little bit more bulkier so I purposely separated my seams and I'm just going to keep as best as I can of a quarter seam all the way down. I don't know the number of the person I don't even answer if he wants to bust on a phone scam last week and don't recognize them in Microsoft calls one another calls new computers another one in the No June what happened? What did it happen in June? The phone scam last week. TNT security the towels on the soon be here. Do you need anything? No. Can you actually sure. put that up and just throw it over on the chair so it's not playing in the floor? The whole thing? Yeah, please. <laughs> no, just throw it on the chair. It's fine. Is Justin watching you work on his pool? No, I'm just oh. let it go and pick up your BPM. Mm -hmm. For those of you who, who are new to my channel, that was my husband, Scott. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. This is a really long slate seam, so I will be here sewing this for a while. They're saying hi to you, Scott. I gotta pay attention too so that I don't run out of um, bobbin because I didn't put a full bobbin in. I put a mostly used one. Sorry, for those of you who didn't watch last night's insomniac video, I'm suffering from the MS hug. So every time I cough, my chest feels like it's going to explode at the same time as it contracts with each cough. So um, overnight, since I was awake all night, it's been really tough. It's So far, this is now day two of it, so it should go away soon, hopefully, because <laughs> it doesn't last very long when I get it. But it's very, very, very painful. So I try not to make myself laugh too much. I have to cough. or I try to slow my coughing down. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to keep going. Lining them up, sewing on down. And the first storm moves in. Okay, Suburban, make sure you're safe during that storm. I sure hope you're able to do that this one hour sewing today. It's been too long and it's been our since hope and rest. Let's get it. <laughs> We'll see you next time. I'll probably come off and on today because I really want to get this finished, but the girls are coming, so I do have to, you know, do other things. But. And depending on my body, if it shuts down throughout the day, too, because I didn't sleep last night. 
I could have probably did a whole entire complete 12 hour video live stream or something in the middle of the night. <sighs> No, I did not press anything. For those that are new to this and wondering why I didn't even go to the ironing board, I did not. Because when I go to press the seams, everything should um it should go nicely. And then the seams will get pressed when I get that far. Hi Lisa. Phone and broadband connection until two weeks ago, and it's brilliant. So I got a call last week asking if all was well. So I thought it was a genuine call. It wasn't. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Loretta. Same voice those times. my seams will get pressed when I finally, um, oh, look at that. I still have a long way to go. <laughs> my daughter and her husband are in Vegas right now at the convention for work. Awesome, Teresa. I, I thought that they were there, so they're there for a few days then. I know you told me that the other day. So they are only two hours away from me. How many of you even remember me making this quilt in April? And then needing to go bigger. <laughs> and that's why I stopped. And like I said, I'll find the original videos. The reason why I know it was April is because um, some, when I typed in the name of the video, I found that it was um, in April. But they weren't all together, so I have to find them all and then put the link in the description of this video so that you guys can go back and watch them, refresh yourself <laughs> to what I'm doing. tried in any pot for your nose that helps me i stayed up last night we were gonna get me one instead i have um a, um measuring cup thing that has a pore spout so i fill that with saline solution and then i tried the pore spout part but it doesn't work so instead i just fill the measuring cup up with um salt and hot water and well not really hot hot but hot enough um because the hot water has the steam and it kind of helps as well. And then I have a big, huge um, suction syringe that's like medical grade. It's a really, really big, like like that big around and I don't know, like that, that long. And it has like a tip spout that works just like a neti pot. So I just take the tip spout and I put it, you know, the curved part in my nose and just like a neti pot. And I just use the squeegee part of it, you know, to push the um, salt water through my nose and that seems to help just like a neti pot but I don't actually have a real neti pot I've told Scott like several times too that I wanted to get one I just I never did I get sick all the time I should have one joined in late today. I don't remember from what I can see now. I haven't watched last night's episode because of our time difference. It's 6.25 p.m. now. It's okay, June. And this, what I'm working on now is from a project I did back in April of 2019. So... 
And for those that are just joining, because there's quite a few of you here right now, after I sew this seam on, um, I'm going to turn to the ironing board anyway so I can press this. Uh, I'll show, I'll hold up the quilt that this is going on. So I'm going to be making this into mitered mitered borders for a quilt. And I'm sticking with the theme, just making it a little bit different. Okay, almost all the way on. I still have to do this again with the other section. <laughs> I gotta try to keep it. I knew that's what happening. I was hearing it running out of bottom right at the end. It always happens right at the end. Right. I'm using black thread. Now I have this really, 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 really long piece. <laughs> and I'm going to take it to the iron. I find the beginning. And I'm going to press it back towards the black. And this is a pretty long piece, so I'm going to just finger press it first so that it doesn't stretch or bow at all. It's going to take a minute to go all the way down this whole entire thing. I just open the seam with my fingers, and every time I get to a seam, I'll make sure that it's laying nice and flat. I could just take it to the iron and press it back, but I don't want anything to bow. And when you finger press, it kind of just gives it that first indentation that it needs to fold back. It looks like my other screen is talking to me. The double border is looking very nice. Yes, it will be awesome. Just not missing my weather any better in Amarillo now. My sister is having radiation treatment. They canceled on her this morning. Boy, that sucks. Is it because of the weather? Is that why they, her appointment was canceled? Mm. It's starting to melt the rose. I'm clearing it up. Trying to get this to stay back. You know, I actually have one of those. Darn, this thing. I could just use this. But I've never really got the hang of using this thing. It is a, you know, like a pressing thing of a bobber. See if I can't get it again. Yeah, I think my nail goes faster than this, obviously. 
a lot of seam to do this. <laughs> I think I'll just stick with ah, stick with my fingers. Thought it would work. There's a lot to go and I still have to press it with the iron so that it stays back a little bit more um, better. I'm just using my, my hands to open the seam and my finger to roll back on it because I want it pressed towards the dark because it's a one inch strip. What will happen is if both sides of this border are pressed towards the black, it will completely enclose that it should they should come equally into the middle and have no room down the center and yes after a while it does kill your nails for really long seams like this i don't use the pad of my finger because of my nerves I use my fingernails. If I use the pad of my finger, then my nerves end up getting all screwed up. It's like a chalkboard. So, you know, that screeching sound that you feel throughout your body? That's what using the pad of my finger does. So I use my fingernails. The sound of it doesn't bother me. It bothers some people, though. It doesn't bother me. Just kind of giving it like a nudge back is what I'm doing, honestly. So easier at the iron. Almost at the end. Oops, I am still on, which is a plus. Alright, almost done. A couple more feet to go. <laughs> Seems like a lot, but because I'm doing mitered borders, I kind of need excess, so. I don't see any comments or anything right now either, guys. I'm trying to just get this done. And here's the end. Coming up on it now. Now that I'm at the end, I actually have to hold it to finger press from both ends or else it'll stretch funky. All right. There we have it. Now, the ironing board. I'm going to turn the camera. Plus, I'm going to hold up the quilt. Okay, so for those of you who are new right now to today's video, back in April, I started this. It's called Mocha Dreams. It was on a Friday fun um, video series. So this is it. Oops. And I'm adding mitered borders to this. That's what I've been finger pressing. To, that are equal to this right here with the light, the dark, and then the light. And it's going to be mitered into the corner so the seam will go like this and they'll come together like this. I don't want them to cross paths. I want them to connect paths. So I'm just doing that. So now that I've finger pressed, it makes it so much easier to just run along this, just like this, all the way down. And this would work with any border if you want to make any border bigger, but have it have a little pizzazz or difference to it. Adding a strip, a one inch strip in between two, two and a half inch strips, or even two. 
two, even two one and a half inch strips even, or two inch, adding a smaller strip in between them kind of just gives us some pizzazz. And it'd probably look even cooler with two, um, you know, printed fabrics instead of solids like I'm doing. But my whole project is, you know, these solids are part of the theme. So and it's for a guy, so it's a little more, it's not as, um, it's a manly pattern. It's not shining and sparkly. It's nothing out there. at the end. Look at that. Okay. So now we have this really long piece and since I pushed the seam to this side, I'm going to add the color now on this other side. I'm going to make that. Once that seam is on, it'll completely hide. So let's turn this. We're going to put it together now. And I'm going to mark, this is the one I want closer. That edge will be cut off anyway. Okay, let's cut the selvages off of this. And we're going to put these together. And I like all my selvages to line up. I don't want to cut off too much fabric, so I'm actually adjusting the strip. You know, I'm literally using my fingers to adjust it so that both selvage ends match up. Because when I cut it, they didn't match up. But that's okay. And then I'll uh, check the comments when I get back to the sewing part. like seems like I took my sweet time with that just <laughs> I'll line it up on a line so that all my salvages are cut the same exact there we go that's all now gone take it over to the machine in one big stack like so and I'm going to repeat that same step Oh, you guys have been talking some of the time. Looking nice. Okay, I saw that. It's starting to melt the roads. Clean up this morning was a skating rink. They even canceled school. Um, hi, Sonia. Um, Amarillo, Texas. She remembers some days there. Chris. Hi, Chris. Glad you're getting better. Yes, they called her last night, but it was already in her town. I'm glad she made it safely. I don't dare on. Uh, Travel on 287 with bad weather. For some, she missed it. She drives Monday morning. She's up to a friend. That's good. Lots of wrecks down there. I believe it. Haven't seen the news today. Remember, it's pretty. Good friends, Diana in House Houston. Hi, Diane. Um, that's cool in Houston. Freezes yet this winter. How you know how much border to make the miter corners? So. This is going to be um, five inches wide, right? So I need at least six inches hanging off on each side because I need the width plus I need the space. So I figured I needed eight strips to go all the way around equally because it was 72 by 72. So I needed two, four, six, eight. You know what I mean? And I still had leftover. Technically, I only need one and three quarters, but... 
it gave me a little bit left over but i'm adding it all together into one super long strip and then i'm going to sub cut it i will fold it into fours the whole entire strip up into four you know fold it in half and then fold it in half again and then cut it that will give me my top bottom side to side i will have leftover hangover but i seem I always add more for minor borders because I can cut those leftover pieces and use them for something else. I always add more than I actually need. And since I had five inches, I still have to have at least six and a half, six, six and a half inches on each side. Not just five, but you need a little bit extra for adjustment and shifting. There is three different ways I can do a minor border. This way, I'm just going to do the hangover way, adjust after a quarter inch seam on the ends, slice it, and go. You know what I mean? But there are other ways that it can be done. I think I've shared that before um, on minor borders. I'm not, I don't remember what the video was called. It was probably just showing um, how I do it kind of video. I'm not sure when I did it, but I can do it again in the future because I know sometimes with a lot of videos it's hard to find the specific video that I have done in the past. But I've done mitered borders three different ways now. And all three ways, I mean one way is super simple, one way requires a little bit more math and um, making sure you have an exact number. But because I'm working with a, um, a bias quilt, everything is on the bias, it is very stretchy all the way around. I don't really have an exact number. It's almost an inch off in some areas. So I just want to make a whole bunch extra and be on the safe side when I put it together. That way it goes together smoothly and I shouldn't have too many problems. But here we got snow and ice up here. Spoke to my daughter in San Antonio. Yesterday, they were sitting out and very close to the Gulf of Mexico, so it's really got to be cold, cold to freeze here. Joanne, hi Joanne, what kind of blade do you use in your rotary cutter? Seems to cut like butter. Um, it is an Ulfa that I have, and the blades are that are in it are Ulfa blades. <laughs> Normally, I just use whatever blades are on sale, but um, I actually had Ulfa blades that were gifted to me. So I put Ulfa blades in my Ulfa cutter. On my 45 millimeter um, rotary cutter over here, that I just put whatever I can find on sale. They all, if you change your blade all the time, it, it cuts like butter every time. But when I cut through many, many layers, I always use my 60 um, millimeter. Um, cutter the Ulfa the 60 because it cuts better for um, multiple layers and I'm used to cutting multiple layers at a time and it works good left and or right handed so that's a, that's a plus because I can cut both I'm not as accurate with my left hand but I'm, I'm pretty good with it alright so now I have gone ahead and made a really really long strip again and now I'm going to attach this to the opposite side. And unfortunately, I hear the girls, and I thought I would have a lot more done, but I'm going to have to attach this and then get off of here for a while and then come back. Um, but at least you guys will know how to um, make a really, really, really long border pretty quick. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pull this up here. And I got it coming from way over there. Oh, i got to unplug the iron real quick, too. It's blinking at me. It's been plugged in too long. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I'm suffering from severe MS hug, and it's like killing me. If you don't know what an MS hug is, it's when it feels like my chest wall is collapsing and or shrinking in on itself. Sometimes it feels like pushing too. It just depends. It's like when I, because I have a cough right now at the same time. All right. My piece of the black is going to go right side up. And now my other one, let's find that in. 
is going to go right side down and make sure that my seam, so I'm going to hold it in my hand, making sure my seam is up. I know you guys can't see that clearly, but... And I'm also going to adjust this one too. Why? Because I don't want any seam to nest up. So I can either put it down or I can put it up. I just want it to not match up with the black seams. And now I'm just going to make my way all the way down. And I'll just keep adjusting it the whole way. I need a 60 millimeter. Yeah, it helps. Hi, Sue. Um, there's all sorts of different brands, but, and this one was gifted to me by Teresa. But I 100% say when you are cutting thicker layers, use a 60. It doesn't even have to be the Ulfa brand. Just use a 60 millimeter blade or rotary cutter with 60 millimeter blade for just random repetitive 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 over and over and over cutting you know and, and the standard cutting you where you're just cutting like two pieces at a time this is the 45 but if you are fussy cutting and or small small projects they also make a 28 millimeter um so it just depends on what you're doing this is for like dinky little areas to get around and so on and so forth i do not recommend trying to cut four layers it's force is too much for 28 millimeter the blade just doesn't i mean it does do what it can but you're really pressing hard and you're actually ruining your blade faster by doing that so these are for just like fussy cutting out of one layer of fabric so on and so forth and you're using small rulers and everything is your 28 but when you're cutting lots of layers from yardage over and over and over the 60 millimeter is my suggestion and they make all different sorts of them um, so of all these brands so i mean and there's even even a smaller smaller one rob appel design that's called the shark apple cutter it is i don't even think it's like it's like 12 millimeter or something it's the smallest little think ball thing i've seen it i don't own one but i don't do much applique so yeah but it's the cutest little thing but when you're cutting a lot and often like i do through lots of layers i definitely say the bigger ones use the 60s the 45 will do it but the 60s are better Oh, and look, I ended up with seams, so now I have to nest them. Ugh. I thought I adjusted that good enough, but... Guess not. Great, I'm not a new quilting firm. Recognizing a lot. Awesome. I have the same same people who show up. Usually my insomniac quilters are usually the same group of people. And then my daytime quilters are about the same group of people for when I have random daytime videos, which is rare, but it happens. And then my So Sunday is everybody coming together at once. I'm just making sure these they're staying right side together and adjusting as I go. And I must have had my speed turned up for some dumb reason. No, I did not, Diane. <laughs> I use an 18 millimeter to square up small blocks. Yeah, I don't even have one of those. I have a 28, but what you just saw. We have one of those, but can't find replacement blades. Hmm. I have an Ulfa. So I have 18, 28, 45, and a 60 Fiskars above it. Did you look under for Robapel, the Robapel blades? And then in the Anna. So. I'm going to use 
one hand to adjust down here because I have one pile on the right side of me and the other one's coming from over there on the floor by the iron. <laughs> if I had a cat in here, if my cat was in here, he would be trying to play with this long strip of fabric. <laughs> And my um, foot, my quarter inch foot thing with the built-in guide likes to get stuck to the fabric. I explained it last night in last night's live. It, it has a little bit more pressure and sometimes the shredding of fabric gets stuck under it. So that's why you guys see it bunch up real quick and then I let go of it by lifting the presser foot. I tried adjusting the pressure, temp the pressure gauge, but then it doesn't sew like I want it to. So instead, I just relieve it by letting go of the pressure of the foot. Hi, Linda. Check. 28 millimeter is my favorite for cutting curves like Drunkard's Path. Oh, okay. Hi, Pepsi girl. I took me. I made it live for a change. That's because I'm on in early day. It's before noon, and I didn't sleep last night, so I figured I might as well get started on another project, even though I still have to finish my blocks for the T-quilt swap, but I'm doing that in my Insomniac series videos, so I'll just keep that for those. And my best friend finally came to the conclusion on what we were going to do to finish this quilt off, so... Now that we came to the inclusion, I could finally finish it. Some cooling going on here. It's a pretty long scene that I'm making. <laughs> My first finger is in the middle between the both and the bottom piece is resting on my middle finger and I kind of just use my thumb and first finger using nothing to adjust the bottom because that just stays in the crease of my um, middle finger and I use my first finger and thumb to adjust the fabric so that it can keep going and then I use my other hand to just hold and guide the fabric as I'm adjusting like this when I'm doing really really long seams like this. It seems to help. I kind of wish I could show you guys a close-up, but you're not going to see it even if I put the camera next to me. It's going to be hard to tell. But I just adjust and adjust on my dough. And I hear the girls, so I'm going to have to hurry up and finish this so that I can get off of here. I'm actually using my knee lift today. Well, sort of. I haven't used it this whole exact time, but off and on, I'm trying to remember to use it. I am working on a quilt that I started back in April of um, 2019. I'm putting the borders on it finally after all this time because I couldn't find the strips I needed to make more blocks. And I didn't want to start over with new fabric. He really loved this line, so. And the style of it. So I'm just going to add to it this the, the actual quilt top that's right there, the 72 by 72 thing. That will fit on the center of his queen size bed. So right now I'm just building so that it'll hang over the bed and nicely. So that'll be good. It'll be a nice, nice bed um, cover. And 
I'll hold it up before I get off this video, but I do have to finish sewing this seam, and then I'll have to come back later when I get a chance, depending on how my day goes to keep going on it. I'll probably just name these part ones, part two, part three until it's done. I just figured I'd build this, build it live. What's seven ninety five? Oh, the blades for a pack of blades. I think we got our my last package of Ulfa blades for like. I think we got a ten pack or two ten packs for sixteen ninety seven or something like that. I don't remember what website it was. But you saved more if you bought more than one package. Is why we bought two packages. All right, I'm almost done. either so I'm just going to take this over to the iron and press back from the side that I can make sure it goes to the dark putting the smaller side on the bottom and at the end now Quarter and seam got a little skip. Sometimes, right when I get to the end, the fabric adjusts itself over somehow, and then I lose my quarter inch seam. It's the weirdest thing. I should use two hands. So you could tell that this one was different. Look at that seam difference. Look at how far down that came. So, this brand, the, it's the same brand, but this print because it was a different with the colors off by ever so slightly you really can't tell from there but you can tell that I cut the same off of the selvage I always cut the selvage off the same but you can see that the strips length was a lot different because look at that all right let me take this over and press it and I'll show you the quilt again and then I'll show you how it's going to be attached Give me two seconds to uh, set this up over here. I'm going to bring this whole entire thing over. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera. And if I'm missing um, comments, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this done. So I'm going to be pressing towards the black. So I'm going to put the big piece on the top since I'm going from uh, right to left right now with the iron. Make sure it stays nice, but I want both my seams towards that black. So I'm just going to open it now towards it so that I can force my seam to want to go that way. And this is what we're building on. So for those who've never seen it, it was a fun Friday fun video in April of 2019, and this is called Mo The name is only because the fabric line, unfortunately. The fabric line is not called Mocha Dreams, but it reminded the person that it's going for of coffee of some sort. So that is it. Every square is different in size. You can see those middles. They're totally different. And like stuff like this, you can actually, if you wanted, put some kind of applique also in the middle or take advantage of this section for quilting, you know, do something totally different in each of these sections. Um, so I'm adding borders. The actual fabric line is a Timeless Treasures Tonga Treats 
It's called Chai, C-H-A-I. So if anybody's curious, but they only had 10 inch squares left. They don't sell the six inch um, by with the fabric strips anymore. So, but that's okay. I'm making this work by just bordering it out. All right, so I'm going to press this now really nice. I'm going to open it up as I go so that my seam goes the way I want towards the middle in the black. Sorry, I can't bring you close to show you. I'm just going to run the iron down it. Keep it nice and straight. Adjusting when I need to. I want the seam towards the center. This is the cool part about having a nice big ironing board. And I can't see comments right now, guys, because I didn't bring my phone over here with me. I'll catch you in a second. You can talk amongst yourselves. Just splitting the seam open as best as possible. It's really small, so I don't want any, I don't want to lose any of my order. I also don't want to burn myself. I burned myself last night, or I should say this morning on my insomniac video. So while I'm here, I'll ask everyone how they're doing today. And if you're watching this video afterwards, tell me how you're doing. I'm tired, but not like, not like super tired, just exhausted because I didn't sleep and I'm sick. But most of you guys know I have severe insomnia. I can't control it. I wish there was some kind of magic pill to help, but there is not. Not for me. <laughs> Would help me sleep. My pistachios have been kind of helping, but I didn't eat any last night. So unfortunately, that's why I think why I didn't sleep well. And even if I would have, I was wide awake. So I don't think it would have helped eating them that late, you know. All right, almost done, and I can show you how this is going to go on the quilt, and I'll have to come back with another video to actually attach it. Almost. And I didn't steam it. Usually I steam, but I didn't steam it. So. Okay. Here we go. 
this is how this is going to work. I'm going to move this up, up and out of the way. Bring you guys close like this. Read some comments for a second. I'm going to show you how. Went to the emergency room last night. It's been about four or five hours. Or the only thing that helped was some kind of injection they gave me to help relax the muscle. They probably gave you Tordal. Uh, hi, Teresa. Let's see. They know blood last long. Hardware freight sells for around six dollars. Thank you. Love your cool buy for now. That was Teresa. I didn't know you were leaving. So bye, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Bye, Teresa. <laughs> no, I don't seem long enough. I'm sure that you guys saw that. Um, well, I hope you're feeling better there, Vicki. Going to the emergency room. Hope you have a great day. Titanium blades don't last long. Who said titanium blades don't? I don't use titanium, but never used them, so I wouldn't know. Sorry from pulmonary rehab due to COPD, so I get very tired. Aha. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to grab a corner so you guys can see how this is going to work. I'm going to place it right up here so that you can see. I'm going to use a weight. Ow. To keep it up here. Because like I said, it's all biased, so it kind of wants to stretch. So I'm just going to lay it nicely. So you can see here's the corner. For a mitered corner, those that are new, what's going to happen is I will sew on the one side. Give me two seconds, please. I'm going to sew on the side like so. And then the other side is going to go all four corners. But see how I have this hangover like this? I'm going to leave hangover like that. Please. She came to say hi. And then this side will get sewn on as well as leaving hangover like that. And then hold it in a 45 degree angle right here. So you can see and hide that one underneath. So then when it's sewn together and I create my miter, that's how it will look all the way around. This is just one of however many borders I need to add to make this big enough to hang over because he has one of those 14 inch mattresses. So he wants a good hangover to the bottom. But this is how a miter corner would end up at the end. So that's why you would need lots of extra hangover for it to come together. Let me relay it like that again. And come together and create that. If I would have built this border first, and then added the black, it would have been a little bit harder and it would have stretched more because the black is so tiny. So that is why I created it like this, all three together, creating the miter. Now, if you don't do a miter border, you end up with a crossover and then it meets, stops there and starts there. That doesn't look right. So that is why I chose to go with the miter around as the first one because it matches up with what's going on in here. So. When I come back later, <laughs> if I can come back later, just depends because the girls are here, I will attach this mitered border. So I'm going to get off here now, though, guys, because of this. Because <laughs> the babies, they want my attention. So I'm working on this. I will do my best to try to find the original videos and put them all um, on here in the description below so you guys can remember and start over from where I was if you want to see them. The quality of the video is not that great because I did use other cameras and so on at the time. I had already been cut off from using live streaming um, from mobile devices at that time. So, yeah. So this is what I'm working on. No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to get off here. I need to eat anyway. So. All right, everyone's saying hi to you, Scott. Hello. And the baby. Be I'm right playing with doggies. the little girls. Okay. I've never done that. What? Well, it's what not that hard. The, the way I'm going to show you guys when I, come, when I come back, I'll show you guys how it's attached. It's the more easier way, and it's, you don't have to measure or do any math. So. I will do all that. And since the baby's getting louder, I'm going to get off of here. <laughs> Once she starts, she doesn't stop. 
All right, guys. So I thank you for watching. I'll be back. If you're new to my channel, subscribe, like, and share. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you later today sometime. I don't know when. Hey.